Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank God for today. Today is Pentecost Sunday, a very special date in the life of the Christian church, and especially for those of us who describe ourselves as Pentecostals. And so I pray today that you will have a glorious day in the house of the Lord and that you will feel his presence near you today as the Holy Spirit comes close to you and warm your heart, you will be blessed. And as you listen to the word today, I pray that his blessing will be upon you this Pentecost Sunday and that you will feel God's presence near you and his arms around you thrown. May you be blessed as you listen to the word of God. Today, I want to share with you from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and there'll be a couple of uh, supplementary scriptures, Luke 24, 49, and Acts 1 and verse number 8. Acts 2, 1 to 4, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came down from heaven a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Luke 24, 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry he in Jerusalem until he be endued with power from an eye. And Acts 1 and 8, But he shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Today, the subject matter is the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And uh, we know that when we talk about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the same person. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer as we ask his blessing and his anointing upon his words. So, Father, thank you for your words. Thank you that they are anointed and thank you that they have the power to change lives. And so I pray today that you would bless to our hearts the preaching of your words. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Give revelation, give inspiration, we pray, and touch the hearts of your people everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Interestingly, um, as I was preparing for this message, I take another look at our declaration of faith and discover that at, there are at least six mentions in those 14 articles that talks about the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit in, in different ways. And the, the fundamental teaching for us says that we believe in one God eternally, existing in three persons, namely the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's important. Three persons existing in one, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then there's another teaching that says, number eight, that we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost subsequent to a clean heart. And I could go on to talk about those. But, you know, Paul, in his writing to the Galatians, he says to them, This I say then to you, walk in the Spirit, and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Of course, as Pentecostals, needless to say that it's a contradiction if, as Pentecostals, we are not filled with the Spirit. Now, does that mean that if you're not filled with the Spirit, you are a bad person? Does it mean that you won't go to heaven? No, it doesn't mean that. But what it means is that you are living beyond what God expects of us. It means that you are under power. For example, if you think about it, you might be 
operating on two or three cylinders when you could be firing on four or six. It's, it's the difference, for example, between driving a Mini and driving a Rolls Royce. The, the ride is going to be a lot smoother. And, the, and, and so the Holy Spirit come to make us more efficient in that which we do for the Lord. And as Pentecostals, of course, what does that mean? Does that just mean that we clap our hands, we stamp our feet, we speak in tongues? No, it means all of that, but it means more. It means that as Pentecostal, we fundamentally believe in what happened on the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the early church. And so, as I said earlier, if you are a Pentecostal, you should be filled with the Spirit. And if you're not filled with the Spirit, you should be seeking earnestly to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Paul says to Timothy in his writing, Timothy, I want you to stir up the gift that is in you. Don't let it die. Don't let it go to sleep. Stir up the gift that was given to you. And so I want to encourage you, to challenge you, to inspire you to stir up the gift, to stir up the gift that is in you. Amen. In Jesus' name. According to um, William T. George in his book, What God Expects of Me, he said this, talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, salvation is the greatest spiritual experience that any person can have. Once you are saved, however, it is the will of God for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Ernest Gross Sr. said this, he says, Religion without the Holy Spirit is like an auto bill without gasoline. It has to be pushed everywhere it goes. Amen. We don't need to be pushed. What we need to do is to seek more of God. And how do we do all of this seeking? We get down before the Lord in prayer, in fasting, in Bible study, and seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So my points I want to make to you today is what is the difference between being converted and being filled with the Spirit? That's my first point. My second point will be what are the ministries of the Holy Spirit in the life of the Christian? And the third will be what are the requirements for receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit? And finally, what are some of the symbols of the Holy Spirit? And to answer these questions, it will be vitally important to your spiritual growth, maturity and service. Learning what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit will lead you into new depths in your experience with God. So what is the difference between being converted and being filled with the Spirit. It is one thing somebody says to be converted, but it is quite another thing to be filled with the Spirit. And I want to use the opportunity to correct the teaching that are in some places that if you are born again and you are not filled with the Spirit, you won't go to heaven. T scripture does not teach us that. Scripture does not teach us that because every person who is saved is, has the Spirit. But what we are talking about today is having the power of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is active in conversion. That's the part of one part of his ministry in the world today. The Holy Spirit is the one who applies the work of redemption to the life of the individual. Amen. So we know that. So when the Bible talk about one Lord, one faith, one baptism in this context, it's not talking about water baptism or baptism in the Spirit, but it's talking about the baptizing work that the Holy Spirit does in the life of the individual when they come to know Christ as their Savior and their Lord. Why is the baptism so important to Christian? Back to William T. George. He explains that the Holy Spirit empowers the believer. He's given to us to empower us. So Acts 1 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and He is going to empower you to be witnesses unto me. And when you go back to the Acts 2 and verse 1 to 4, this is what Joel the prophet prophesied about. He says that in the last days, 
God is going to pour out of his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Interestingly, you know, um, one of our uh, more mature uh, ministers, I heard him said this, he says, there isn't much difference between vision and dream. He says the only difference is that one has more time than the other. The, the, the visionary has more time than the dreamer because naturally age is catching up <laughs> on you. But um, today it is for you, it is for your children, it is for your children, children is for as many as the Lord uh, God shall call. So the Holy Spirit is there to guide and directs us. He guides and he directs us. He also teaches us the holy spirit prays through us the holy spirit gives us various gifts the holy spirit helps us the holy spirit reminds us of things that we have learned in the past and that's why he is so important in our life he is there to make us more efficient in that which we do for god and it's not, he's not given to us just so that we might have a good time. As I said earlier, clap the hands, stamp the feet, speak in tongues, all wonderful. But he's there to make us more effective in our ministry in the kingdom of God. What are the requirements then for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What are the requirements? Well, the Bible says, first of all, that this, the Holy Spirit is for the Christians. It's for the, he's for the converted. So he fills lives that are clean. He fills clean lives. According to John 14, 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him and for he dwelleth in you and he shall be in you so the holy spirit fills clean lives that's why we talk about one of our beliefs is that of sanctification cleansing purifying laying aside and obviously that comes in 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 different phases so we've got to prepare our hearts to receive the baptism in the holy ghost the holy spirit fill those who desire him those who desire him. According to Matthew, Jesus says in his teaching, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So you've got to, as a believer, create the thirst, create the desire. Like the psalmist says, as the heart Panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? Amen. When shall I come and appear before him? So the Holy Spirit filled those who desire him. Amen. The Holy Spirit fills obedient Christians. The Holy Spirit fills obedient Christians. We have to be obedient. Somebody says that spiritual gifts are literally wrapped in obedience. We, you, 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 you can't be either way. You have to be an obedient Christian and then the Holy Spirit will come to your life. The Holy Spirit will fill those who have faith faith and i i want to believe today that a number of people don't receive the baptism in the holy spirit because they lack faith it's important for you to believe the holy spirit is a gift to you and you don't have to do anything to receive him all you have to do is believe open your heart live a clean life be an obedient christian follow the principles of scripture and then receive that gift that the lord promised to every believer so he filled those who has faith in him and of course needless to say the 
evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is we believe that it is speaking in tongues is the initial evidence that the baptism has come. But of course, there could be no study about the Holy Spirit without those listening to me today going to the book of Acts. If you want to learn about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, go to the book of Acts. Go to the book of Acts chapter 2. Go to the book of Acts chapter 10. Go to the book of Acts chapter 19. And in every one of those instances, you know, where the Holy Spirit was poured out, the evidence of speaking in tongues followed. So go to the book of Acts, read for yourself, and see the evidence there that speaking in tongues is undoubtedly the evidence that the Holy Spirit has come to the life of the believers. And then there are what we call the symbols of the Spirit. The symbols of the Spirit, and they are numerous, several of them. And I want to mention a few of them this morning. And the first one I want to talk about is the dove. The dove is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says of that, you know, when Jesus himself was being baptized in the river Jordan by John, that the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and rest upon him. And this is, this is another evidence when we talk about being Trinitarian. The Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus, Jesus in the water being baptized, and his Father speaking from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased here him. This is my beloved son. He is doing the will of God. So the dove is also a symbol of purity, of, of holiness, of, 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 of cleanness. So that's a symbol of the Spirit. Fire is another symbol of the Spirit. So the dove came descending. Fire came baptizing. John says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. I wonder today if there's anybody who wants that fire. I wonder today if there's anybody who wants that fire, wants that spirit to come down. Like, you know, the, the, the songwriter say, let the fire fall on me. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven fall on me in the name of Jesus. My prayer is that that will happen to some of you today as you listen to this message. The Holy Spirit is not only fire baptizing, but he is fire illuminating, giving light, shining the light. He is fire purifying. The Holy Spirit is also oil. The symbol of the Spirit is oil comforting, oil consecrating, oil giving joy, oil providing healing. We need to know that. Oil illuminating. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Amen, somebody. He gives comfort. He gives, he consecrates us. He gives us joy. He gives us healing. He illuminates our lives. The Holy Spirit is also rain and dew, rain and dew in abundance. Hallelujah. Psalms 133, as the dew upon Hermon, as the dew upon the sand upon the dry land or the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded his blessings, even life forevermore. He is rain and dew fertilizing. Hallelujah. Causing us to grow, causing us to go deeper in his love. The Holy Spirit is a seal authenticating the believer. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a seal pronouncing us to be who we are, genuinely saved and converted for the servants of God. The Holy Spirit is a voice guiding us. Isn't that wonderful that we are not by ourselves? Amen. The Holy Spirit is a voice speaking. He speaks. The Holy Spirit is a voice warning. He also warns us. The Holy Spirit, another symbol of the Holy Spirit is water. Water in abundance. Hallelujah. Water flowing 
Like Jesus says, you know, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink of the water of life. And when you drink of that water that Jesus gives, you will never thirst again. The water that Jesus gives, you know, it reaches those places that other things can't reach. I want you to know that today. If you are thirsty, if you are hungry, go to that well. Go to Jesus and drink from the well that will never run dry. Out of your belly, he says, shall flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit is water giving birth. You know, he says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you have to be born again. You have to be born again. And when you want to be filled with the Spirit, you have to be born again. That is the sequence. Be born again. And then after you're born again, the expectation is that you would be filled with the Spirit. The, if the Holy Spirit is water, offering cleansing the holy spirit is water freely given the holy spirit is water refreshing praise god the holy spirit is wind a symbol of the spirit is wind independent you can't control him hallelujah like he says to nicodemus the wind blow it where it lists that you hear the sound, but you don't know from whence it came. And I know that there are lots of people today who tries to control the move of the Holy Spirit. But he is independent. You can't control him. He is the one that is in charge of the church. He is the leader of the church. And we need to make room for him to get on and do his work. Amen. You know, when, when the Holy Spirit is, is moving and is working in the church, life is easier. Things go better. Hello. People are more edified. People are more blessed because we are not reliant on ourselves, but we are more relying on the blessed Holy Spirit to guide us in what we do. He is powerful. The Holy Spirit is powerful. There is nothing too hard or too difficult for him. The Holy Spirit also revive. He is, he is wind reviving like Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. Hallelujah. He said, can these bones live? And he says, Lord, you know. And the, he was told, prophesy to the wind. And he prophesied and then breath came into them. Life came into them. I want somebody to know today that the Holy Spirit gives life gives boldness, gives courage. And I can tell you that. I, I was one for sure who was very shy, very bashful, would never stand before a group of people. But once the Holy Spirit comes into your life and anoints you and take you over, you will find that that bashfulness will go. Amen. And you'll do things you never dream you could do. That's the difference that the power of the Spirit makes in our lives. Amen. So he is wind and he revives us. He revives us. And I know that there are lots of ignorances about um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, I, I remember one of our minister telling us that when he was a young Christian, he didn't fully understood. And he thought that if he climb up into a tree, he would receive the Holy Spirit quicker because he would be nearer to God. I hope that that ignorance is not still existing today. God's promise that I will send my spirit. I will pour my spirit upon you. And all you have to do is be at the place to receive him. And I can tell you, your life will never be the same once you are being filled with the spirit. You will be more joyful. You will be more courageous. You will be more willing. You will be more enthused. You will become more passionate. Hello, somebody. Your fear will disappear. So I encourage you today, I really encourage you today to seek to be filled with the Spirit. Lift your faith. Lift your faith. Don't get into this business of trying to emulate what other people do. Everybody in the church are not supposed to Speak in tongues the same way. Nobody is supposed to teach you how to speak in tongues. Amen. The Bible says they speak automatically. 
when, when Peter went into the, the house of Cornelius and preached the word after Cornelius been praying for years, seeking God, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues. Amen. As the Spirit gave them utterance and it causes Peter to say, you know what? Now I know for sure that God is no respecter of person. So you don't have to be somebody special for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. All you have to do is to believe. Believe the scripture. Lift your faith. Prepare your heart. Pray and be desirous. Be hungry for more of God. And the Holy Spirit will come and fill your life. As I bring this message to its conclusion today, uh, there are numerous scripture na names and titles, as I said before, given to the Holy Spirit. He is known as the, the breath of the Almighty, according to Job 33 and verse 4. He is known as the comforter. John 14, 16, and that, and that word comforter there, where Jesus says, I will send you another comforter. He's talking about somebody similar to himself. One, one like myself, I will send him to you. He is the eternal spirit, according to Hebrews 9, 14. He is the free spirit, Psalm 51, 12. He is God, Acts 5, 3 and 4. He is God's spirit, Nehemiah 9, 20. And Psalms 143 and 10. He's the Holy Spirit in Psalm 51, 11. He is the power of the highest in Luke 135. He is the spirit of adoption in Romans 8, 15. He is the spirit of burning in Isaiah 4, 4. The spirit of Christ in Romans 8, 9. The spirit of counsel in Isaiah 11, 2. The spirit of glory in 1 Peter 4, 14. The spirit of God in Genesis 1, 2. The spirit of grace in Zechariah 1, 10. The spirit of holiness in Romans 1, 4. The spirit of judgment in Isaiah 4, 4. The spirit of knowledge in Isaiah 11, 2. The spirit of life in Romans 8, 2. The spirit of might, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of the Father, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord God, the spirit of the Son of God, the spirit of truth, the spirit of of understanding the spirit of wisdom that's who we are talking about today we are talking about the third person of the godhead one that every christian believer especially a pentecostal believer should receive should have in his or her life it's so so important that you reach out and you seek god and you seek him earnestly you seek him with a passion you seek him with a strong desire amen do you know i i have not researched this i have not researched this and i don't have the numbers but i am convinced that perhaps there are so many of our believers who proclaim to be pentecostals who are not filled with the spirit and that's not good enough it means that we are living below the standard that god has set for us so i want to encourage you that if you are not filled with the spirit today can be the day today can be the day wherever you are you need to just reach out you need to make an altar where you are and say lord i need to be filled with your spirit increase my faith so that i can be baptized with the spirit and when i'm baptized with the spirit lord i want to do what the, 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 the Acts 1 8 says I must do be a witness unto you and you will make me more efficient I want to go and help to fulfill the great commission I want to go and witness to my neighbors I want to go and witness to my peers I want to go and witness to my workmate I want to share the gospel with those with whom I work I want to be able to be more effective in that which I do for you. So, Lord, I pray today, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your fire. Fill me in the name of Jesus and let me not thirst anymore. God is able to do that for you. 
God is able to do that for you. Somebody says that he who has the spirit in his heart and the scripture in his hand has everything he needs. Everything he needs. The two things go together. You need the scripture in your hand and the spirit in your heart. And then you know for sure that you are fully equipped for the task of head. The Holy Spirit enables us to live for Christ and to be a witness to the world. If you today are not filled, this is your hour. This is your hour. Reach out where you are. Make an altar where you are. Cry out to the Lord. Become desperate. Become desperate. Let him know that you've been living below the standard he has set. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him to give you that holy desire, that holy passion, that, that thirst for more of God. And I'm sure he will not deny you. He will not deny you. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't stop there. But you can then go on to pray and ask him to bless you with various gifts of the Spirit. And again, this will make you more efficient in ministry. In fact, if, 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 if the gifts are operational in our church, it makes our services more efficient. Amen? More edifying. We will be blessed even more. So I encourage you today to seek for the Spirit. And it is my prayer that as you are praying and as you are seeking and as you are reaching out and if you are not by yourself and there are others around you, they might be supporting you to pray. And we look forward to hearing that as a result of today, many more people uh, are being filled with the Spirit. So let us pray for you as you make that altar where you are that God would touch you by his spirit. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for calling us into fellowship with each other and with yourself. Thank you for the ministry that you've given to each one of us and the call that you've placed upon each of our lives. And today, as we address such an important subject as being filled with the Spirit of God, we pray for those now who are seeking. We pray for those who are reaching out. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you would lay your hands upon them. Let the Holy Spirit overshadow them. Let the power of the Most High come upon them. Give them that experience today in the name of Jesus. Let them speak with new tongues in Jesus' name. Let them prophesy in your name. In the name of Jesus, give them the power for service that they need in Jesus' name and let them become effective and efficient witnesses for you in the name of Jesus. We pray your blessing upon each one today in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch them, we pray, and release them, we pray, in Jesus' name. Let new gifts come into their lives today, Father, as you minister to them. We believe it, Father, and we claim it done in the mighty name of Jesus, our risen Lord and our Savior. Amen. It's a good time for you to give the Lord praise where you are for that which he has blessed you with. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him glory. Reach out to him and touch him and, and receive that blessing as you pray today. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.